If you hired me tomorrow, this is exactly how I would set up your account for success. This is actually how you scale a small budget. These are the exact creatives that you need to make and you can make them for free. What's up marketers? This is the only Facebook ads guide you need if you're a small business owner or if you're running Facebook ads without a massive budget. This tutorial contains no fluff. I assume that you already know why Facebook ads is so powerful and that you've already set up your Pixel, your Shopify, and your business manager. Today, here is what we're going to cover. Number one, your ad account structure and setup. Number two, which creatives you should be testing first and which ones to test next. Three, how to optimize your account and begin scaling and some frequently asked questions that I always get. Like what objective should you use? How do you manage targeting multiple countries? And my favorite question, how to deal with multiple products. So let's go ahead and dive into the ad account. So inside the ad account, you see that we only have one campaign going. And yes, that's really all that you need, especially if you are spending under $5,000 US dollars per month. The reality is, is that especially if you're just trying to go after sales on Facebook ads, you need to keep it really consolidated, really simple, and put the bulk of your focus on developing creative that's going to reach out to your target demographic. But on the ad account setup side, this is exactly what I do. So number one, you see here that we have one sales campaign. Yes, you are going to be using a sales to conversion to purchase campaign, which means that you are going to be optimizing for a purchase conversion. And if you're just starting off, here are the exact two ad sets that I would start off with. Now you're going to see in here, we have a broad ad set and an interest ad set. So broad is something that a lot of advertisers talk about and they champion, and it really does tend to do the best for a lot of brands that I am working on. But I'm going to be real with you. A lot of times when you are starting off with a new pixel or a new brand or a new product, sometimes you're going to get better efficiency out of a interest stack, out of a lookalike stack, which is why I highly recommend testing all three of them. But if you are starting Starting off under a hundred US dollars per day, I would suggest starting off with one broad ad set and one interest stack. Now you're going to want to stack as many interests as possible, or really you want to stack the interests that you think are going to be of the utmost interest to your target demographic. Now I would think about things like what type of publications they like, what type of TV shows they like, where they like to shop, what their other interests and hobbies are. And I would try to get a list of 10 to put into your interest stack. Now, there used to be an old notion of only using one interest at a time to figure out which one's the best. This is a completely losing battle. Facebook now works the best on broad audiences. Now, the reason why I suggest to test a completely broad audience, test interest stacks, test lookalikes if you have the budget is because of this metaphor that I like to use with my clients. So buckle up. The way that I see it is that Facebook ads targeting is walking through a really big forest. Now, the broad trail is going to be your biggest trail and you are going to see the most amount of trees, AKA the most amount of people to see your ads. There is also a lookalike trail. There is an interest trail. Now, based on whichever one of those trails you go down first, you're going to be hitting different people, AKA the algorithm is gonna be prioritizing different people based on the whole fact that you are trying an interest optimization or a lookalike optimization or a completely broad optimization. Now I say optimization, I really mean targeting. So again, in these early days, I often find that interest can actually help you out, which is why I highly suggest testing that out. Probably before lookalikes, I don't always see lookalikes working, but if you find that you are trying broad, you are trying interests, and you don't think that it is as effective and you have high confidence in your creative, go ahead and try a lookalike stack as well. And honestly, that's it. That's all it is for the account setup, which feels and seems too easy and it is, and that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is what types of creatives you need to run. Now, your creative is gonna be your most important lever. It is gonna be the thing that is most vital to your success on the Facebook ads platform. So I would suggest if you are starting off with a budget under 5K per month or around $100 per day, which is what I would suggest at the bare minimum, especially in the US, is testing out three different ad creatives. The first one is going to be a features point out ad. Now, I often, 
can find that this works super well, especially for product-based brands, but even for services as well. Now, the reason why I think this works is because I think it's a really great way to highlight the core features and benefits of your product in a really easy to understand way. Now, what's cool is you can do this with high-end studio photography, or you can even do this a little bit more native using Instagram stories font overlay and using shots of your product simply taken from your iPhone. I see both work really well. The third ad that I'm going to suggest is a from the founder style ad. Now, I often find that founders are most uniquely positioned to clearly communicate the problem and the why that they are solving with their product or service. I just often find that too, people are really interested in who the people are that are creating the companies that we buy from. So if you can share a little bit about your story, I often find this is really impactful, especially in the early days. Sometimes I often find that a lot of founders become the content creators of their brand, which is really awesome and a really lucrative way to grow your business in 2023. And the third one that I suggest is a really traditional problem solution style UGC. Now, essentially the way that this user flow goes is that you begin with a problem, you agitate that problem, and then you introduce your product or service as the solution to that problem, and then go through a series of features and benefits, testimonials, social proof, and then a catchy CTA. This is honestly the framework of how I create a majority of my UGC content and like low key, it works every single time. If you're a new founder and you don't know how to reach out to creators to create content for your brand, I would take a look at this video that I created that's all about how to source content creators and the type of price range you should look at paying them and exactly how you can go out and find the best people that are gonna make content that converts for you. And the next thing I wanna talk about is how to actually optimize your ad account, right? So here we are back in our ad account and we can see that the budget here is $100 per day. Honestly, if you're gonna do anything less than that, I would probably start off with just doing a interest ad set and see how that works for you. Any less than that, you're gonna be spreading your learnings way too thin. So, you know, we have ourselves at the campaign level and hopefully we'll start to be able to see purchases coming through our ad account. Now, in order to optimize a Facebook ad account, what I always suggest is to first go through to the ad level. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to optimize only once a week and I'm going to turn off the ads that are not working or are, get, or are getting too high of a cost per purchase. So that would be a CPA. And if you find that you're not getting any purchases just yet, I would hold off at minimum of two to three weeks, especially if this is a brand new ad account. And I would take a look at things like, what is your click-through rate? How long are people watching your video? And also take a look at the comments that people are leaving. Make sure that your user flow is actually working because a lot of times in the early days, those purchases are a bit slower to come in. But I find if you have this set up, they'll actually start coming in pretty quickly. So hopefully that'll be the case. Now, if you find that you have some ads that are getting a cost per purchase that's not profitable for you, then I would go ahead and turn those off. And I would do that within every single ad set. So, oh, if we see this features point out isn't working for us, you know, maybe it got a cost per purchase that was way too high, we would go ahead and turn it off. But if we saw that some of the other ads weren't maybe getting as much spend or, you know, we're doing fine, but like maybe weren't quite scalable, we would just stop there, right? And we would let the algorithm then push spend to these other videos to see how they would perform exactly. Now I would go back here. I would do that for both of the ad sets and really the most important part of optimizing for people is going to be iterating on creative and making that new creatives. So if you turn off a creative in your ad set, then I would suggest putting in a new creative. Now, if you are at this, you know, $100 per day budget, I would suggest trying to add in a new creative every other week at a minimum. And really that's going to be the bulk of how you are going to be optimizing. You're going to be turning off ads that don't work or are not profitable for you. You're going to be adding new ads. You might test out different targeting, but to be honest, I think even at this level, a broad and an interest stack is pretty much going to be good. You only really have to test another lookalike ad set, but I would make sure that you're getting creative winners first before you try doing more targeting testing. Now, if you are ready to scale and you start to see, oh, I'm actually getting pretty good results from my Facebook ads, what I would do is I would suggest scaling 
selling just at 20% every three to four days, as long as results are holding, and especially if they're holding on the back end. So you're gonna want to actually look at your Shopify and make sure that those ending sales are most profitable for you. I'm assuming if you're starting off too, you're not advertising on other places or you're not driving traffic from other sources like organic and the bulk of the people coming to buy from your store is actually from your Facebook ads. So as long as you are profitable on your Shopify end, that's when I would go ahead and increase by 20%. So go ahead and increase there. And we do that really every three to four days for as long as results are profitable for you. Now I will say in the early days, attaining profitability is gonna be really tough because you are brand new to the platform. You don't have any trust within Facebook ads. You have no idea what works for your creative, for your brand. So I would really try to take a step back from profitability and think a lot more about okay how much can I spend to learn on this platform and in the beginning days I would really suggest brands and business owners trying to invest at least three thousand to five thousand dollars for a period of three to four months to see if the platform is going to be right for them and if it has potential to scale for them now I know that is quite a bit to ask for small business owners but Facebook ads is pretty pay to play and if you are able to get some traction and you have a product that is really making a great impact on people's lives honestly it's not going to be that hard and you're going to be able to go a lot further um, and meet a lot more people and help them as well through the power of using this platform okay and now it's time for some frequently asked questions that's something that i always see new advertisers do is they think that they need to build a facebook funnel right so they need to build an engagement campaign for a traffic campaign then that feeds in their conversion campaigns no this is a completely outdated approach to Facebook ads. And if your main goal is to generate sales, you need to go after those sales correctly. Facebook has told multiple advertisers that engagement campaigns and traffic campaigns are the equivalent of like window watchers. They actually just never ever buy on the Facebook ads platform. And you're only really going to unlock people that have confidence in the platform, that have confidence in buying and shopping online by using these sales or conversion to purchase type of ads. Um, I often hear people talk about seasoning the pixel. No, not on Facebook ads. This is completely false. Really just go right for the sales to purchase if that's what you want. Another frequently asked question I get is what about lead generation? Honestly, I would do the same thing for lead generation, but I would number one, start off by doing a conversion to leads type of campaign. I'm gonna be really honest, the lead form campaigns on Facebook ads tend to have lower costs per leads, but those leads generally are not high quality. Another question I get is what about retargeting? In 2023, I am actually using a lot less retargeting campaigns. And the reason why is because those retargeting audiences are already in your prospecting audiences because exclusion audiences just aren't as reliable as they are before. So if you want the most efficient bang for your buck, and especially at these smaller budgets, I would just be using one campaign and targeting both retargeting and prospecting in one ad set. If you start getting above a budget of like 10K, to 20k per month and you can experiment with a retargeting audience but to be honest i don't really think it's worth it another question i get is about how to target multiple countries now this is kind of a difficult one because i often find that brands who are targeting multiple countries and they have bigger budgets like 50k per month or more they tend to have success splitting out their countries so that they can make sure they are throttling the right amount of money towards each of those countries and i find that that tends to be pretty successful but for brands that are spending, you know, less than 10K per month, I would suggest starting off keeping all the countries that you're targeting into one ad set or one campaign to start. But I really do think, especially if you're targeting more of the tier one countries like the US, the UK, Australia, and Europe, you're going to struggle initially on that smaller budget. So I would recommend if you are, you know, starting off on the Facebook ads platform to try targeting targeting one country to begin, get some creative learnings, and then try to scale from there. And then the final
final question that I have is what about multiple products? The way that I suggest for people to look at the Facebook ads platform is they need to concentrate on finding creative winners instead of creating funnels around specific products. The reality is, is that not every product you make is actually going to be good for acquiring customers. I see this a lot with beauty brands that have, you know, 10 to 20 SKUs, but they only really use Facebook ads for one or two of their SKUs. This is very normal. Um, and I often find that business owners will end up spending way too much money trying to make another product work when they really should just concentrate and double down on what works. So what I would suggest is if you have multiple products, keep everything in one ad set at the beginning, especially especially at these smaller budgets and just try creating the best creative you can for that specific product. And you're going to find as you test more creative and as you get more learnings that one or a few of the creatives are going to do a lot better and you want to continue carrying those learnings with you so that you don't end up wasting a lot of money. I would suggest that if you're just starting off on the platform, really just start advertising one or two of your best selling products and maybe run a few tests here and there when you can, but I, I have to find that a lot of small businesses waste thousands and thousands of dollars trying to make other products work when really they should just focus on what type of creative is working and iterate from there. And that's it. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments section below and I will see you guys next week. Bye.